Alrighty. Howdy, neighbors, and welcome back to Fault Milestone 1. Last time we found out her name ain't Rune. It's actually Sarah. She's been a liar, McGee. Anyway, let's continue. They're positioned distantly from each other. As if they all had specified seats, with the empty seats between all of them. One man stood at the edge of the room, while the other three were seated. He had a gentle expression on his face as he argued with the others, with Sarah huddled close by him. Like I said, the original rule is that they must have one rest day, as well as proper compensation for their work. Please stop dragging this old topic back. Is Sarah wrong? I know, I know, but that was the old rule. This entire discussion is pointless. It's already been ages since Sid's regulations were abolished. None of the other sisters have taken issue with it either. Sarah, what do you think about all this? I apologize for my actions. You see, I'm the only one who's being selfish here, trying to make an issue out of it. So. Your actions here make me think you've somehow misunderstood that you're very reason to exist. You are the property of Svitz Enterprise. You do understand that, right? Yes. I'm not saying that we simply let this entire incident slide. Just that we need to reconsider who's responsible here. Good grief. Albus, just how many times do you want us to repeat ourselves? The point is, we don't even want to touch on the subject of the sisters altogether. You understand that, right? What's all this now? This was something we all decided on together. You're right. The go-ahead was given by each and every one of us. That was because on paper, the numbers all looked good. Most of the sisters were working well as minors. Not as children, but like actual, actual coal miners. That's what they were saying. I realized audibly it would sound bad, but that's how it was spelled. But the main reason why we allowed the project to continue is because Sid would take full responsibility for it. That was all in the contract, and you'd better not forget that. But we, the board of directors, decided that we, that should something happen to Sid. We did, all of us, decided that Rudo would shoulder the responsibility. He's the CEO of such a large corporation, and that position comes with obligations to match. Just how long are you gonna keep this attitude up? <sighs> Koalas? workload. He's handling far more than Sid ever has. Just look at how many people have come to the meeting, and maybe you'll understand. It's sickening. That's why we keep warning you. Look, just look at that sad face on it. It just makes things even worse. I swear, why did Sid even use that expression? He's obviously doing this just to spite us. If there's a problem, fix it. Even better if we could just get rid of it altogether. Simple as that. You know, we can't just do that, right? That's why we're here talking about it. Sooner or later, more problems like these were about to pop up. I'm sure we all already knew that much. The way you talk is proof that you've lost sight of the real issues. The only thing you care about now is numbers, the bottom line. Morals. Don't kid yourself. Numbers are everything. The bottom line is everything. This company isn't going to survive on charity. The numbers are what put food on your table, Alice. Calm down, you two. We need to get some work done. Heck, I'd like you to explain to me why we have to waste our time on something like this. You make a good point. While the arrangement is somewhat different from before, it is rather unfair that we continue to push our responsibilities to Rudo. Gentlemen, I apologize for the delay. 
Rudo, hello. Chief, thank goodness. Rudo, now that you're here, I need to get something off my chest. Every single one of the directors acknowledges your management skills. They're top notch. I have no problems with your qualities as a leader. But look at the attendance for this meeting. Out of 12 directors, only four are here. Not a single person from Lab 4 except Albus has shown up. Both all and the others have other matters to deal with. They would have been here otherwise. Except it's only the four of you from Lab 9. They just won't shut up about this whole issue. Most of us in the board of directors don't even want to concern ourselves with this anymore. Honestly, all the trouble caused by this issue is doing nothing but creating unnecessary friction between us, and I want no part of it. Let's step down. I see now. The top four of Svites, of Svitz, my bad, Svitz Enterprise spent nearly an hour debating. There's absolutely no real results to show for it, am I right? Why you? This incident notwithstanding, I'm sure everyone has personally felt the monetary benefits generated by the sisters project. Am I mistaken? Well, that is true. Sarah. Sir. I've already told you this. The silly... Compen... Compensatory? Return salary system has been annulled. Have you forgotten? No, I do remember. Rudo, we've already gone through this. Sid's condition was that the sisters are supposed to receive payment in cash or in kind for their work rendered. The system allows them to choose either. In this case, as long as the on-site overseer gave the approval for the use of sediment as her payment, and it still falls within the agreement. Sarah did just as she was told. I see. So basically, you're saying that I'm simply trying to pin some kind of blame on Sarah, is that it? What? When I say compensation has been annulled, normally, you take that to mean that payment for your work has been scrapped, yes? The fact of the matter is that not a single sister has interpreted that to mean payment in cash is no longer allowed. There wasn't a single one that came asking for the conditions about payment in kind. I believe that is proof that the sisters, Sarah's side, have understood the intentions of the board of directors and myself. But also, well, I'd rather not bring this up in public. We aren't in the lab, Albus. I said a lab nine, at the very least, I'm your superior. You will have to respect that. I apologize. I'll keep that in mind from here on. Moving on. Regarding this incident with Sarah, this will be discussed in the rotation tomorrow. I believe this matter is heavy enough to merit discussion. That means this incident, this whole incident is your fault. However, everyone, you all seem to be making a very basic misunderstanding. Not once have I said the board of directors, no, not once have I asked the board of directors how to deal with the situation. All I've done is sound the alarm. Perhaps some of you might have some kind of hidden agenda. Or maybe it's simply a mistake on your part. I've given considerable thought regarding Sarah's actions. In any case, I consider this act as a tenement to treason against the company. Bruno. As if they wanted to hear your thoughts on the matter. For it to have turned into some chaotic blame game. I'm not sure what to think. The entire board of directors may leave. I've noted your intentions and will keep them in mind. Sarah, yes? Do you understand why I find a problem with the actions you took? I do. So you do then. Then why don't you tell me, right here, right now, what exactly is the problem? It's because... It's because I tried to take sediment without getting permission first. Wrong. It isn't? I don't actually understand the problem then. But I... The issue at hand is that despite your understanding of the concept of the crime, you're willingly committed to the crime regardless. I... Sarah. Yeah? I will contact you once the board of directors has reached a consensus. Until then, return to your usual duties. Work harder to make up for the time wasted here. Understood. You are not allowed to leave your quarters outside of your shift. 
Yes, sir. I pay attention to what I'm about to tell you now. The room will not be locked. Nor will there be anyone monitoring you. We're free to obey or disobey my orders. You can just throw everything away and escape. You can even fight back and kill Albus and I if she so desire. Think hard about what exactly you want to do from here uh, from now on. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? I do. Good. Let me resume your duties. Yes, sir. One more thing. Your emotions are an eyesore. Stop showing them to us. Don't forget to smile in oh. Don't ever smile in front of me again. Hmm? That's an order. Understood. Any dots. Wonder what Hertzvin meant by that. I can't say either. Rune. He has quite a history. Dots. May have sunk our teeth into something much, much larger than we'd expected. There's nothing we can do but head to the tavern. At the time, Hertzvin gave us. Do you think we could head to the tavern before that and ask around? I don't see why not. Sorry, I just can't sit still like this. Alright, I understand. Let's head over and ask people there and ask the people there a few questions. You may run into someone who knows this Albus person. Yeah. My goodness, it's early in the day and this place is already bustling. But I think bustling is a good thing. Oh ladies, you're back. We're so glad to come back. You're like two beautiful flowers gracing this little tavern of ours. Hmm? You remember us too. They have quite the memory. Of course. Lovely ladies like you are such a rarity here. How could I ever forget? Hey, y'all better listen up. We've just taken our last orders for now. Oh. We ain't taking any more new orders, got it. Oh dear, so are you two. We have come all this way. Looks like we're gonna have to start prep for the dinner service. No, oh, actually, we did come here for a meal. Oh? There's something we'd like to ask. Um, do you happen to know a person named Albus? Albus? Ah, uh, you mean Albus Folster? Of course I do. He's one of our regulars here. Can you describe what he looks like? Well, he's the uh, quiet, middle aged looking gentleman. He's got a real sharp mind. He's got a pretty high position over at Svitz, if I remember. He really doesn't come here as often as he used to, but when he does, he sits at the table over there in the back to have his dinner. But it points out a specific table, as he tells us. Alright, you have my gratitude for the information. Man, that guy. So that's how it is. With that personality, if this was just an act. A smooth operator getting two pretty girls. Damn. One of them. What is the matter thinking? Let's make it clear. It is nothing. It is nothing like what you imagine. I swear. We're only looking for someone. The side comments are totally unwarranted. Ah ha ha. Tono, your face is scaring me. Dots. Dots and more dots. Well then, what should we do now? Schedules are completely open until tonight. Hmm? Turn to look over there. Rune! Good afternoon, Miss Selfie and Miss Ratona. My hair stands on end. Your face! It looks so, so... lifeless. It's not that she has a lack of expression. It's as if there was no life in her in the first place. I can't explain it well. As if she is just a moving doll, it feels eerie. Is she alive? I've been looking for you two. I sincerely apologize for being unable to meet you both at the appointed time. And Ted seemed to just be hanging there, not even a single hint of emotion showing. Ruin, what happened? This is the sediment that Master Bruto was trying to hand to you earlier today. Originally, I was supposed to present it to you myself. I would be more than delighted if you accepted it. He's about the stone. What happened to you? She was at Rudo anyway. Master Rudo is my owner. As she speaks, and smiles very slightly. Despite it being a smile. The way she does it without a trace of emotion. It's nothing but eerie. Owner. 
Why are you treating yourself as an object? People are meant to be treated that way. I'm not a person. I'm a thing. Who replies instantly, without a trace of hesitation in her voice. What the world are you saying? Is that Rudo blackmailing you to do this? Master Rudo has done nothing wrong, nor is he blackmailing me with anything. I am willing... I am willingly in the employ of Master Rudo. And I'm willingly here, meeting with you both. Hmm? What was that? As if a slight hidden emotion had returned to her. No way! No matter how I look at it, you can possibly be doing this of your own free will. Oh, lady. Come on, tell us, please. We might be able to help you out here. We're friends, aren't we? I do not have the authorization to become friends with anyone. And my name is Sarah. I sincerely apologize for giving you both the incorrect name during our first encounter. Although inconvenient, I request that you refer to me by that name from here on. Well, I doubt we'll ever meet again after this. Sarah? Hmm? Then bows once again after telling us that. It was another artificial smile. No, that's just... artificial. Yes, that's the right word. It had been bothering me since we first met. Every so often, she would perform these strange, unnatural actions. Like every single movement of hers was calculated. All of her actions are artificial, manufactured. Like she was thinking about the proper response, the proper expression for each and every interaction. I must attend to other business now, so unless there's anything else, I bid you both a good day. What? Wait a second. Rude, no Sarah, was it? Let me just say this much. No matter what you think, what do you yourself think? Selfina and I consider your friend. Who has started walking away from us until my Steven stopped her. If you need us to help you, we will do everything in our power. So let me ask you again. Are you being held against your will or being forced to work? Or is all this because you hold that man, Rudo, in such high regard? Perhaps she has her reasons. Ones she can't disclose to us. Or possibly ones that people won't understand. She's here for her own free will, supposedly. But as Elfin said, that could possibly be true. However, people have the right to reject associating with others as well. If she insists that much, then we ourselves are limited to what we can do. If you no longer want us to get involved, then... Miss Ratona, she gets me off. I believe you are misunderstanding something. When a hammer is used, does it question its role as a tool? Does it curse its own destiny? I am not being made to work against my will. Once more, I will explain thoroughly, so as to clear up any further misunderstandings. People are the ones who have rights, the ones who are given rights, and the ones who benefit from rights. For someone like me, who has no authority, I do not have the right to reject people as... Oh. As you say so. Likewise, I do not have the right to hold Master Rudo in high regard. That is because I am an object. A thing! So I continue to speak as if she were mindlessly dictating. How could anyone possibly say something that sad, that tragic, without a trace of emotion? That girl is no longer the rune we met yesterday. Now, have a pleasant day! Bye, Sarah. Just how- oh, just what could have happened? How could someone change so drastically? Hmm? Of his eyes lost focus. Milady? I think I'm a little angry right now. <laughs> now that it's gone this far, it makes me want to keep on meddling in this. Even if she starts to hate us. Hi Cassie! Hello! So she just told us her stand on the matter. If we continue to get involved with her, all you may end up doing is getting her to despise you. It's not just that. Hmm? Well, you mentioned it before as well. 
Is she Rune or is she Sarah? Was her kind, cheerful behavior from yesterday all just an act? What I'm sure of is that I want to know the truth. But at the same time, I want to know more about this country and the Outer Pole just as much. I want to know if they really do practice slavery here. Or if it's all another... discrimination taking place. I want to understand why I suddenly want to know about all these things. Selphine, do you think we could accept any kind of discrimination? Bigotry, poverty, war. These are things that have been eradicated from Ruzhenheim, for the most part. When it comes to slavery, even if we understand the reasons for it, our mentality refuses to accept it, no matter what. That doesn't matter, Vertona. Even if we can't change anything, we have to first understand the situation, or else nothing will ever do- or nothing will ever happen. Nothing's eyes are full of the level of dignity I did to see in her, as she gazed toward the direction that Rune had departed. Sarah, idiot. Her name's Sarah. Night. After Selfie had fallen asleep, I snuck away from the inn and headed for a certain place. I got a hold of some interesting information. From what I heard, the cemetery near the mana mine on the outskirts of town. Not too far from where Selfie and I were carried to by the stray effect. About ten minutes, ten or so minutes after making my way out, out of the forest, I came across something that looks like a cemetery. Oh, freaking cat. No. Eek. Times two, my freaking cat. There we go. The place seemed to be fairly well maintained. None of it seemed to be in particular disrepair. A cemetery in the middle of the forested area in the dead of night. Awfully creepy indeed. A thick fog added to the unwanted, sinister atmosphere of the situation. Well now, push the gate open and take out the note that the innkeeper passed to me. Rune Svitz. On the note was Rune's name, written in the language. Now I just have to search the place from top to bottom to find an engraving that matches. At the very least. I can be sure as to whether or not Rune, the little sister, was actually moved on to the next world. Twenty minutes have passed. The cemetery sure is large. Thanks to the fog, I can't tell how far I am from the entrance. But this is quite a large cemetery. Hmm? Damn. Damn! <laughs> what terrible timing. Just at a glance, it seems like I haven't even explored a third of the cemetery. Really, the cemetery is ludicrously large. And all of Cadia City, Cadia City's deceased and up buried here. In any case, I can't have the weather turn even worse on me. I need to hurry up checking the area out. Any dots? Ugh. Even five minutes have passed and already the drizzle has turned to a downpour. The rains penetrated my coat my cloak and coat. My shirt to my skin. Not a good idea to keep looking around now. I was looking for a place to shelter myself from the rain. Oh! And now that... <laughs> now I'm sweating. <laughs> Not cool! Sit. I'm paralyzed. I'm searching for Mistress Rune's gravestone. Hey, Mr. Peak. My hairs are all standing on end. I'm keeping my guard up this whole time. I have to break past Monocroft in case, in case worse came to worst. And despite that, you. No, more importantly, she had no presence. Just like when we'd first met. On top of that, her eyes. This girl. Just. Who or what are you? His face remained expressionless as the rain battered against it relentlessly. It took everything in me just to keep my eyes open, but Sarah's eyes didn't even blink. 
We will not find Mistress Rune's headstone here. Why are you ruining herself? Who can say? Who can say? It don't make any sense. This property is under Sfit's group of companies. Trespassing is not allowed. Mr. Tony, I hope you understand the situation that you are in. She speaks softly but firmly. Please do not trouble Master Rudo or Sfit's enterprise. Leave the city as soon as you can. Well then, if you'll excuse me. With these parting words, Rune disappeared into the forest. <laughs> Might have just been me, but it felt like I saw loneliness creep into her expression for just a moment. This was that I encountered last night. And Rune didn't have a gravestone. Why? Does that mean Sarah's Rune? No, the townsfolk all said Rune had died. Damn it! Do I think about it, the less it makes sense. I saw that happen, huh? I see. I wish I could have been there too. Something made her displeasure quite clear. For me to hear she spoke out loud. I want to have a good talk with Sarah too. I apologize, but it was already so late. And if you don't get enough sleep, then Mana Shock might. I really wanted to have a good talk with Sarah too. Forgive me, I won't act on my own from now on. Please accept my apology. What should I do? I think it seems to glare right at me. Ugh. Didn't expect you to be this upset. Alright then, I'll have you make it up. Make it up? Oh my god. Alright then, I'll have you make up for this sometime, okay? Understood. You know, Rutona. I know I'm not really all that useful. Not at all. No, no, it's fine. I'm not trying to put myself down or anything, it's just a fact. I'm not as smart as you. And I can't use bottle craft either. And if something would happen, I might end up just being a burden on you. But you know, times like these that I really have to be with you. What do you mean by that? Ratona, you're always putting yourself in danger to protect me. Just telling you to stop isn't going to help us either. If this were Ruschenhain, we could simply appoint someone else to take your place. But right now it's just us two. In a place so far away, it's like a different planet. Her travel is just trying to get back home. Her duty right now is to make sure I get back to Rujan Hyde safe and sound, right? It is. If this thing happened to you, there's no way I could possibly make it- make my way back all by myself. So let's split the risk between us two, okay? So even if something happens, there's no hard feelings between either of us. If not, then I- I want us to be on equal footing. This is not an order, but a request as your friend. I'm such a fool. Right in this situation, the two of us need to act as one. It's so... Patient... Pat patently... Wow. Patently simple. I'm so sorry. I promise you, we're equals from here on. Right. Even though I said I held her opinion in high regard, I ended up treating her like a child. It feels as if a hate cloud in my mind is lifted. Now, I'd like to propose something. By all means. Say also... I'm gonna try using monocraft. What? <sighs> Rudo awakened in the war room, having spent the entire time looking at documents prior. He had had a terrible dream. Why did I have that dream after all this time? That occurred to Rudo, but the answer came just quickly. Sarah. Truly abhorrent. It was memories from childhood that he didn't want to remember. This is absolutely the worst. He recalled the deep resentment he had harbored toward his father. The feelings of pity and compassion he had for his mother. With no one to receive those feelings, he continued to plague him endlessly. Now that stemmed from twelve years ago. Rune was truly a violent girl since her youth. Not once would she take to heart anything said to her. She would have a way of just getting on everyone's nerves. 
No matter how hard people tried to understand her, they couldn't find any reason. And Rune continued to be a source of grief. She would generate hostility and strife with others, and in the meantime slip away into gaps as she laughed her head off. Maybe that's why she was someone who loved being violent. She was so intent on rebelling against something. It was like she was missing something important inside of her. She was that kind of girl. That day, her left eye was swollen red, perhaps having been stung by an insect. It was soon for Rune. Her mother forced her frail, weak body, and she tried to bring Rune to the hospital in the outskirts of town. I was waiting for you, Rune. No. Look, I'll give you my dessert tonight, okay? Because I don't know what she has to say for today. I don't want it. Go away. Does it seem really hurt, Rune? You gotta go to the doctor to take a look at it. You might never get to see with that eye anymore. You don't want that to happen, do you? I don't care. This eye can go die. Come on, don't say something so silly. Rudo, Rune. I'm ready to go. Come on, why don't you push yourself today? Got out of bed for this. Whatever, mom can go die. God damn, Rune. Okay, fuck. The hospital can go die. And dad can go die too. Rudo, you go die. Everyone should just die. Don't say something so sad. Well, the truth is, I didn't particularly find what she said sad. Go die. I couldn't keep track of how many times she said that to me. We seemed to have figured that with her limited vocabulary, saying that would inflict the greatest emotional harm. Rune. I never really mind you telling me that, but please don't tell Mom that. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Yet another meaningless endeavor. She was a little devil who would do the complete opposite of what you want her to do. On the other hand, if you tell her the exact opposite of what you want done, then she'd do it without question. Maybe she took pleasure in causing people to stress. A conversation with Rune really amounted to nothing more than a one-way assault on you. Oh, Rune, you haven't changed yet. Sorry, Mom. She just wasn't listening to me. That's alright, sorry for making you deal with her. Come on, Rune. Let the doctor take a look at your eye now. No. I won't take no for an answer. We need to have that looked at right away. I found you a really good doctor. I'm sure he'll make it all better, just like that. No. Rune knew that there was no winning an argument with our mother, so... I don't want to go. <laughs> she would just whine. That's the greatest form of resistance a child possesses. Uh... She started screaming. She would continue until her vocal cords were worn out. Ugh. Rune, please stop crying, okay? If we're finished at the doctor's, I'll get you some ice cream from the central plaza. I don't wanna go. We just wouldn't do as she was told. And so we had forced her to come along with us. Thirty minutes after, Rune finally stopped screaming. When she was getting checked up at the medical facility, Rune kept trying to bite or lunge at the doctor in charge of her. The doctor suddenly continued the checkup, but it was written all over his face that he was already at his wit's end. If this hadn't been hospital under our family, he probably would have told us to never come back again. On the way back, we stopped at the central square for a breather. Goodness, what am I going to do with Rune? I'll try hard to deal with her. I'm sure I just... I'm just a little more patient with her. I can talk to her and she'll understand. I guess I will learn a thing or two from your patience with her. I swear, if you weren't here with me, I wouldn't know what to do. I'm sure room doesn't mean bad. I had to believe that, otherwise I could have possibly continue. Maybe when she grows a little older, then I'm sure. Continue considering her as my little sister. I'm sure this is. This is just a phase. It's, it's just for a while. It won't last. Once Rune grows just a little older, even she will. I'll be fine. Don't worry about a thing. Mom. Rune came back with a broken stick. Who knows where she found that? Hmm? Hey. Don't play without a dangerous. Ha ha ha! Dangerous. Dangerous. 
He continued to run around, screaming. She kicked up dirt with a stick and dashed off to who knows where. Goodness gracious. We need to get her back here. Who knows what sort of trouble she may cause. That's a fun thing's happening over here. I'll go and get her. Let's wait here and rest, Mom. No, I'll go with you. If she causes trouble, if she has problems outside, I'll need to scold her properly. If only that would have prevented what came next. Uh, screaming? Hmm? Just moments later. It took us a moment to even realize that the blood curdling stream the blood curdling sound we heard. There's a scream. Hee <laughs> hee. Kavanach? What was that? I went with the source and I see a boy convulsing on the ground while being straddled by someone. Ah, oh, this has been a gas. <laughs> what the Someone was rune. We continued to stab the stick from earlier into the boy's face over and over while laughing hysterically. As if she had completely lost it. What? The whole area was just stained red. With how unreal, how unbelievable the scene was, my mind's completely zoned out. I thought to myself. Is this what it would look like if I splashed a whole bucket of red paint here? Hey, answer me. Ugh. I wasn't even trying to dodge a stick that kept coming to bear down upon him. He was clearly unconscious. Rune! Die, just die already, he's stupid. <laughs> Rune's voice, already hoarse and raspy, kept screaming at the kid to die. He no longer sounded like a child's. Die, die, die! Why did he even sound remotely human? Ha ha ha! Next moment, my body just lurched forward unconsciously. When I came to, my clothes were just drenched and dyed with various shades of crimson blood. I'm fairly sure I managed to pull a rune away from the boy, but I didn't have any clear memory of doing so. The boy was immediately brought to Svitz Medica General Hospital. Patient name Marcus. Oh, that, that's the guy. Aquatis? 8-8. I've just performed the appropriate surgical measures, thankfully, managing to save the boy's life. However, they weren't able to save his left eye because of the extreme lacerations inflicted. The stick had pierced through his eyeball and created a large fissure in the. Sphenoid bone of his skull. It caused a huge mana imbalance in his body. Marcus would have to suffer chronic migraines for the remainder of his life. The reason why Rune attacked him was discovered later. According to her, he made fun of me because of my eye patch. This incident occurred when Rune was six years of age. The doctors remarked that the incident is quite bizarre. How resilient the child's eyeball was, its position, size, the durability and sharpness of the stick Rune used. All of the factors had to have been just perfect for the whole incident to have happened. Apparently, it was practically impossible for a girl six years of age to have inflicted such serious wounds on the boy two years older. There must have been some element of surprise for her to have been able to stab such a small vital point. The doctor said that the incident that this incident was truly bad luck. That's so he said. But he's wrong. There's no way. It was just sheer bad luck. It wasn't just the incident where a rune simply lashed out due to emotion. Somewhere deep inside of her, she must have had clear intentions to harm and destroy from the very beginning. This little incident was just an excuse to exercise that malicious intent. After the incident. And received the absolute worst scolding of her life. She apologized to every single person involved, bawling the whole while. The peacekeepers, police in other words, gave a direct order to place her under indefinite house arrest. For some time, Rune simply stopped talking altogether. 
course the responsibility of dealing with the aftermath fell solely on my mother's and father's shoulders. The Spitzes did everything in their power to make things right with the Gokrali's family. We had Spitz Medica provide the latest of medical technologies. The extravagant costs of treatment were all paid for by the Spitzes. Marcus Gokrali's education was fully paid for. Even his parents, who were experiencing troubles with work, were promised a livelihood as well. It all added up to be a very generous offer to the Gregualis family. At first, the Gregualis turned it down. However, as time went by, the family began to quarrel amongst themselves, arguing that it was a once-in-a-lifetime chance. In the end, Marcus's parents divorced, and his mother left the city soon after. A day. A week, a month, a year. Time had passed. The Sfitz conglomerate continued to grow in power. Although deep, the scar left in the Sfitz's family slowly began to heal. With the passage of time, Rune slowly began to learn how to interact with other people. She began to speak more politely. It was as if the violent menace that was that was her had been completely overwritten, instead turning into a proper lady. He was much more considerate to other people, disturbingly so. In reaction to her indescribable behavior, I harbored doubts. Did Room truly learn anything from the incident? While I was initially doubtful, the skepticism eventually faded away. More time passed since the group called this incident, another five years. Any thoughts? I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Ready. So, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you later.